Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video to explain some of the video file support in Pro Tools on Catalina. As some of you may know, uh, not all of the files that you may have used previously will work uh, in Pro Tools on Catalina. But firstly, uh, I am on the latest version of Pro Tools and also on the latest currently available version of Catalina. So, first things first, let's have a look at what happens when you try to import a video file that's not currently supported in Pro Tools on Catalina. Here we have an H.264 MOV, a QuickTime file, which is quite a common, uh, a file that quite commonly will be sent to post-production audio. When we open this file, we'll get this message that says, we cannot import this file because this version of Pro Tools relies on QuickTime components that are not available with this OS. Please see avid.com for the latest compatibility information. It's important to note that this latest release of Pro Tools on Mojave, for example, will support QuickTime and you will be able to use Pro Tools as you have up until now. So if you don't need to update to Catalina, um, then it may be an option for you to stay on Mojave so you have all of the QuickTime functionality. However, if you do buy some of the newer Apple machines, you may have uh, no option but to use Catalina. Uh, if you click on this More Information button, it'll take you to this website uh, at avid.com that has quite a detailed list of what files and versions are supported on Catalina. But I think most importantly is MOV files uh, for import and also export are not supported. So let's have a look at some of the solutions which are mentioned in this knowledge base to uh, keep your workflow working even if you're on Catalina. So the first option is to work with the editor and ask them to supply you an AAF file that has the video and audio as MXF format files and that way Pro Tools can import them and play them back. So if I open this we have audio files as MXF, video files as MXF. In this case I'm going to link to the media rather than import it but that's totally up to you. When I push OK uh, the files uh, appear in Pro Tools immediately and I can play Just those back end. and use them as I would have normally. So that's one option, talk to your editor uh, about supplying a AAF file with the video media and audio media as MXF files so that they can import into Pro Tools directly. However, if you don't have that relationship with the editor, you may need to use another option, something like Video Slave. So Video Slave uh, allows you to play QuickTime files in Catalina, so it does have that uh, compatibility. So I've dropped that same file into the timeline on the Video Slave application, and I can now play that back in sync with Pro Tools. Let's just have a look at a view where we can see both windows at once. So when I uh, play or uh, move my playhead within Pro Tools, it updates that position, and when I play back, they also uh, play back in time. So if you want to have a real-time way of playing back QuickTime files on Catalina with Pro Tools, Video Slave is definitely an option. Video Slave also allows you to export the audio to a new QuickTime file, which you may need to do if you're sending a QuickTime file to a producer or a director for approval. The way that Pro Tools and Video Slave connect to each other for synchronization is in the following places. Synchronization, so we have an MTC generator port going to the input of Video Slave, and also machine control is set up as well to give you navigation between the two applications. So that's uh, two ways of using these applications. Either make sure that the editor supplies you with an AAF uh, with MXF encoded media, use a Video Slave as another option. If those options aren't available to you and you just receive a quick time from uh, a third party, there is another option, which is Shutter Encoder, which is uh, listed in the knowledge base that you can uh, look at at avid.com. So the same file that I wasn't able to directly import into Pro Tools, I can select in Shutter Encoder. Then I'm going to choose DNxHD because we know that DNxHD works very well in Pro Tools. I'm just going to choose a, the 36 encoding rate, which is usually enough for most audio applications, although you can choose a higher rate if you need to. 
And quite importantly, I'm going to generate OP Atom format files, which will make sure that they're in the MXF uh, file format, which Pro Tools can import. So when I start this uh, encoding, it's worthwhile noting that this is a transcode of sorts, so it does take some time. I'm converting a about a minute 40 video file, and that's going to take, uh, you know, about 30 seconds on a 2013 MacBook Pro. So if you're doing a whole TV program, maybe getting an AAF or using Video Slave uh, may be a better option, or at least making sure that you allow enough time to convert those files before you need to begin your job. So once those files are converted, it's gonna display those for me. And now I can drag those files into Pro Tools, uh, just as I would have in the past. And that video file is available. And now let's grab the audio files that go with it and pop those into the timeline. I'm just gonna use a control click to line those all up. And now I have all of those files uh, available to me in Pro Tools that from a transcoded QuickTime file. So just to review, the options are ask the editor to provide a AAF file that's in MXF format. You could use another application like uh, Video Slave that will play in real time and play QuickTime files directly without any conversion. Or you could use another application like Shutter Encoder to transcode those files into something that Pro Tools can play. So definitely check out the uh, knowledge base on uh, avid.com and read about these options and what files are supported. And if you can, perhaps it will be better to, for you to stay on Mojave. But now that you have the information, hopefully you can make a choice that works for your workflow. Thanks very much, and I hope that's helpful.